What's going on everyone? My name's Tenderbris and welcome back to Generation Zero. For today we'll be discussing another method of movement tech within the game. This time focused solely around speed itself. The last bit of movement tech we covered was essentially combat driven and required you to have at least one Phoenix Hunter to be able to utilize the HFJ. But this time, we'll be discussing a piece of movement tech that you can utilize in your casual day to day in Generation Zero. Stamina jumping. This is something I covered in my pro tips for Generation Zero, but today I'm going to really go in depth on just how much faster this form of movement is in comparison to standard sprinting. And we're going to discuss the two variations of stamina jumping and show just how useful it truly is, not just in the form of moving fast, but in the benefit of combat as well. Movement tech in video games can be one of two forms. Either movement tech for fast maneuverability like what we covered in the last video, or a subset of movement tech called speed tech. You can see this in many forms throughout video games, but some prime examples are the Sonic games, where the name of the game is always going fast, or in something like surfing in CSGO. Speed tech is incredibly beneficial to higher level players in video games as it not only allows them to go fast, but use it for various forms of high level play like speed running, competitive racing, or just looking hella flashy while they play. Speed tech can be massive in its time saved, or it can be minute, but the quintessential point of speed tech is that every second matters. So let's see just how fast stamina jumping truly is compared to typical sprinting. The comparison I have here is a simple race to Ibelholmen Church from Itervik, and you can see that stamina jumping was faster by 7 seconds in total. Now you might be thinking, who cares about 7 seconds? But truthfully, those seconds add up immensely over the time you play. As well, this only increases the further you travel. The time saved becomes truly exponential, increasing up to the point where you're saving literal minutes of your life from just watching your character puff and wheeze across the farmlands, thus making stamina jumping the most optimal form of movement when it comes to long distance travel and exploration across Ustatorn. And further so, uh, my stamina jumping wasn't even the most optimal stamina jumping that you can see in the game. You can get incredibly tight on your stamina jumping and utilize it to gain even further speeds than what you can see in this simple race here. It all just depends on how much practice you put into the movement tech itself. Now, let's talk about how you achieve the two methods of stamina jumping as they both serve their own benefit. First up, we have Intermittent Stamina Jumping, or ISJ. The ISJ is useful as it's a great entry towards the next form of stamina jumping. It's really easy to time based on the visual tell of your character's weapon position, and due to you continuously getting the initial sprint speed, which is the fastest rate of sprinting you can have, you can use this to go really dang fast. Uh, to time this, all you need to do is watch your character lower their gun. Once they swing it downwards, you're good to go for a hop. And you can chain this together to reduce your stamina bar right back to zero, allowing you to go through another full sprint before needing to do another set of ISJs. For the next form of stamina jumping, we'll look at Rapid Stamina Jumping, or RSJ. The RSJ is great because you can use this to quickly recover your stamina bar almost two times as fast as the ISJ. The only downside is its timing can be tricky. You can sometimes get by just mashing the jump button till your bar is back to zero, but sometimes this can end the sprint, which is something you want to avoid, especially in long distance travel. To time this one, you need to wait for your character to just barely start lowering their gun, but once you get good at this form of stamina jumping, you'll notice there's a really smooth rhythm to it that will quickly become muscle memory for you. Now stamina jumping can get messed up by uneven terrains, so bumps and hills, but if you recover it quickly and start over, you still wind up saving time over just typical sprinting. I advise practicing this in a nice flat area like the Uverby Air Base, as its flat terrain gives you an excellent opportunity to get the rhythm of both the ISJ and RSJ down pat. Now let's show off some combat examples of this in action. 
So here's a great example of how ISJs can help you close the distance on your enemies really, really quickly, which gives you the opportunity to utilize that influential control that I had been talking about in my previous videos. Uh, as always, I try to keep all of my tips and tricks kind of uh, flowing together in a way. So you can utilize these uh, stamina jumps in order to really utilize and benefit reactive and influential control against the machines. Uh, it makes it really, really easy to close distance on tanks as well. Uh, here I'm using a little bit more of a rapid stamina jump just to regain a little bit of stamina so that, that way I can make my way around the back of the tank and then start attacking things like the tech pod, the fuel cell, and the battery, and all of those various weak components on the back of the tank. Uh, using these stamina jumps also gives you the ability to circle around the tanks much quicker than they can actually turn, which gives you the opportunity to again peek out those backside weak components. And here again you can see me using rapid stamina jumps in order to close that distance between me and the tank and be able to have that influential control so that the tank will start going for its farty gas attacks. And also, uh, this is another kind of benefit to it, you'll be able to close the distance between you and the tank to the point where you can utilize those ticks against the tank itself, as you can see here. So it doesn't do a lot of damage, but uh, it's, it's kind of satisfying using the tank's ticks against themselves. Um, but again, you know, just utilizing some intermittent stamina jumping here in order to actually circle around the tank again faster than it's able to turn, so that that way I'm able to peek out those weak points. So there you go, the ISJ and RSJ, two sides of the same coin essentially, but both with dramatically different applications. I want to know, do you do stamina jump already? How many of you have been using it since my pro tips video last year? Luckily, this bit of movement tech has a lower skill ceiling than the HFJ itself, so I feel it is more of a middle ground for veteran players and casual players alike. But I highly advise, if you don't utilize this tech, to start doing so now. You'll immediately notice the difference. Cheers, everyone, and thank you so much for watching.